What's up, guys? Stas here. So another day's in the books for the stock market. And let me tell you, man, today was not a good day at all. Well, maybe the Russell and the Dow, they broke even. So not that bad for those two. But the NASDAQ with Apple going down and the S&P, well, they didn't do so well. The S&P went down half a percent and the NASDAQ went down double that over 1% down on the day. So we're going to break down the markets in this video. And of course, we're going to go over SoFi stock, which somehow, some way went up on the day up one percent up 10 cents so we're gonna break down a bunch if y'all find value hit the like button make sure to subscribe and don't forget to get up to 16 stocks for moomoo each up to two thousand dollars use that link down below or simply go to stasurfest.com slash moomoo get your free money guys we'll talk more about that later and with that being said cheers let's dive right into the video so like i said sofi went up over one percent as the indexes went down for the most part on the day which again we'll talk about that later in the video so uh, you know make sure you guys stick on throughout so so far a lot of the green came in the morning you guys can see we opened up at around let's see 880 roughly 875 and we ended up going all the way to nine dollars and 20 cents by around 10 a.m so in the first half hour guys we rallied close not exactly but almost 50 cents on <clears throat> SoFi stock, excuse me, guys. Uh, we can see that equated to around, let's see, a four and a half, almost five percent move. And then after that, you guys can see after that initial run this morning, we then pulled back a little bit from 920. We actually double topped uh, right at that point, 918, 920. We double top, went down to about, let's see. Um, 890, 895, and mind you, we held a higher low there, which is important, <clears throat> but we then went to 915, failed to take out the high from earlier that day, or earlier in the day, rather, and we kind of got ourselves in a wedge throughout the day, right? You guys can see if I draw this out, boom, higher lows, but lower highs at the same time. So, SoFi did pretty well. It closed at 9 bucks. It closed up 1.1%, but we didn't actually close on an upswing. Uh, we actually closed on a downswing with a lot of the green coming in the morning, and us downtrending for the rest of the day from that point, right? Pretty much is how, it, you know, it played out today. And look, guys, as I peel the layers back a little bit on the five-day, five-minute, you guys can see now we just hit a fresh high on this time frame, which is good for the bulls. We're trading above the highs now from the last couple of days and from last week, which is great. And if I pull up this 10-day, actually, uh, well, this is the 20-day. We're at a fresh high on the 20-day. And on this 10-day chart as well, let me show you guys that. Yep, look at that. Fresh high on this 10 10-day uh, chart as well. So we're starting to break out and slowly reverse to the upside on SoFi, no doubt. On the 5-day, 10-day, 20-minute, or 20-day rather, you guys can see it. It's, you know, the proof's in the pudding, right? And if I pull up the 4-hour time frame, now we can see we're starting to break above with today's move up to 920. We broke above $9, which is right by the 180 SMA resistance on this time frame. And guys, keep in mind, we have not broken above this moving average in a good couple of weeks. Last time SoFi was above the 180 SMA on the 4-hour chart here was on the 9th of August, it looks like, maybe even before that. Yeah, either way, early August, which was a little bit over a month ago, about a month and a half ago at this point in time. So SoFi is finally starting to reverse. Now, if we look at the four-hour chart again, we all know we have a head and shoulders potentially here in the making. If I draw this out for you guys, we have the left shoulder right here, we have the head right here, and mind you, we're still under this neckline, which you're about to see in a minute here. Let me show you this. Boom, right shoulder right there, and let me show you this neckline. We're still technically under it, so even though we're above the 180 SMA now, we're starting to break above nine, which is awesome. We're not fully breaking out quite yet, which will happen if we do start to take out 950 to 10 dollars, at least in my opinion, on SoFi stock. Maybe even 950, uh, depending on who you're talking to. But either way, guys, as of now, we're showing the baby steps, the initial steps of a breakout. Today was great. The past couple of days have been awesome. Uh, but on the four hour, we're not fully breaking out quite yet. So let me actually set two alerts here. I'll put one at 950. Let me do that now. Mark is at or above 950. And I'll do another one at $10. Mark is at or above $10. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I don't know what the heck's going on with me today, but there we go. Mark is at or above $10. So those are two alerts set on SoFi, which pretty much will tell me, all right, is this breaking above the neckline? Are we starting to move towards, you know, $10 plus? Or 
Are we not going to do that? Time will tell. Time will tell. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below as always. And now let's take a look at these indexes, which you guys, like you guys probably saw, they did not do well at all today. And clearly we're not breaking out anytime soon on the four hour chart. You guys can see that here on SPY, which you all probably remember. We talked about the wedge that's on this time frame. Let me show you guys on SPY. There we go. We have higher lows being made clear as day, right? But at the same time, we have lower highs. You guys can see those lower highs being made all throughout the last couple of weeks. So clearly we're still in that wedge. We're still in that pattern. And on the 20 day chart, if I pull this up, you guys can see it even better. And on the intraday, we pretty much like you guys, you know, know at this point, you probably already know we downtrended all day on the intraday, right? We had a nice little run midday. All right. Not too out of the ordinary. Then we ended up dumping aggressively into close and triple Q, which tracks the NASDAQ 100. You guys can see did exactly that. We had a nice little pump <clears throat> early on, followed by a downtrend. Then we saw a nice pop in the middle of the day, followed by another dump into close, right? So that's what's going on right now. Looks like the downtrend overall on the five day is continuing. Well, not really even on the five day. Uh, maybe on the 10 day, let's see. Yeah, 10 day downtrend on triple Q is continuing and spy as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Jeez, I don't know what's going on uh, with me today. But overall, yep, downtrend is intact. And we can see a lot of this has to do with Apple, right? Apple has not been doing well. I'm not sure if you've seen, but just a couple of days ago, it was at 190 bucks a share. Now it's at 176. Percentage wise, it is down roughly 7%, which you know, in a week span for a company the size of Apple, two and a half, three trillion dollars, seven percent. That is a very big drop. And it was actually down even more considering the all time high is at 200, roughly 198. Yep. So from 198 to 176, Apple is down roughly 11, almost 12. Yep. Almost 12 percent. So we're pretty much we are in correction territory, not quite yet in a bear market, but Apple is taking a beating, no doubt about it. And a lot of this has to do with China, the recent news that we just got that they're looking to ban iPhone usage for government workers. Will that happen? Will it not? We don't know. Is it a political move? We don't know. Uh, but this is definitely going to hurt Apple. That's a huge market. China's over a billion people. Of course, it's going to help or, uh, hurt Apple, guys. Uh, right? Obviously, it's going to hurt them. And as of now, I'm going to be honest, looking at the charts, you guys know I love looking at the charts. We are on the verge of collapsing by the looks of it, right? We're under the moving averages. We have a head and shoulders here on Apple. I'm not trying to be a doomsdayer, but this is the reality, right? We're not biased on this channel. We have a head and shoulders, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. And all we're doing right now, mind you, we're under the moving averages. All we're doing right now is holding this channel by a thread. We're barely holding above it and if this thing falls under 170 guys man you better get ready for more downside in apple directionally it would start to turn bearish at that point in the short term in my opinion and we could be going uh, even lower we could be slipping down even lower from that point and who knows maybe 150 60s is where apple could be going to and to be honest I think that would not be a bad thing. I think that would be a good thing considering how much Apple's gone up this year. And honestly, I think it's a bit frothy. Let's be honest. Is Apple really worth $3 trillion? I mean, guys, Apple is a company that's obviously a beast. They have a massive moat. There's no denying that. But at some point, this company is going to need to take the next step in terms of innovation, which they're obviously doing. And I've been a person on, on YouTube saying for a while, Apple is lacking innovation, right? There's going to have to be a point where I don't want to say they pivot, but they start doing uh, or they look for their next big venture, right? Obviously, it's the iPhone. It's been that for over 10 years at this point. Uh, but what's next? I don't know. That's the million dollar question. Is it these goggles? Is it, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, AR, VR, virtual reality, whatever it is. What is it? You know, that's what Apple has to figure out. And for me, guys, at these valuations, I feel like it's too risky. I think it's a little too frothy. And I own Apple. That doesn't mean I don't own it, but I own it at cheaper, uh, you know, much lower prices. But at these levels, would I be a buyer? No. Uh, but, you know, if it were to come down under 170 to 150-ish, 40, 
that'd be a spot where I'd be like, all right, maybe uh, maybe it's worth looking at. But right now, it's kind of in no man's land. It's in a it's in a zone or a range where I'm just gonna wait. I'm gonna wait it out, and you know, I'm gonna see what happens between 170 to about 180, 185. This is gonna be big. Uh, this 10, 15 dollar window. So, what do you guys think? This turned into a Apple SoFi video. So, what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is free. And guys, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Twitter, at Stocks Talk Stocks, link down below, and you might as well get up to 16 stocks for Moomoo, Moo, each up to $2,000 as well, guys. Why not? You might as well get free money. Listen, once you open up your account using that link down below and you fund it with your initial $100 deposit, you get five stocks right off the bat, and fund it with at least $1,000, you get 10 more stocks, totaling 15 stocks, and guys, it gets even better. Fund it with at least $5,000 on top of those 15 stocks for a limited time, that is, you all also get a free share of either Google stock or Tesla stock, which makes this promo a no-brainer. So get on it. Use that link down below. And now, cheers, guys. I'll catch you all in the next one.